Um, we're going to use this last time uh, to get rid of me and get some other people in here who can uh, wind this up a little bit. And this is your chance to ask any questions you haven't asked and try to tie all this together with what we've done and what we did today and what's going to come up. And I guess, Bill, you're in charge of all this, right? Oh, really? <laughs> well, I think, I think the way we're going to do this is a, uh, a Woods Forum on So we're going to treat this like a Woods Forum, uh, meaning if you have a question, let's see if it can be answered by another participant. And then if there's a gap and there seems to be a need, one of us will chime in. My sense is that you all learned a lot, and this next stage is really about taking what you learned today and thinking about how does this apply to the landowners in your focus area because the next phase, even, well, so we have the training that's coming up, but right after that training, we're all going to be developing action plans for each, really for each focus area. You know, we're going to be developing them by one in northern New York, one in southern Connecticut, one in northern, uh, sorry, two in, Two each in the northern and two in the southern part of the counties. But ultimately, you're going to be looking at that action plan and, and figuring one out for your own focus area. Thinking about what is your first event? What is, what's a follow-up event? How are you going to, in a sense, as Jay was saying, follow through with landowners and help them towards making the next decision, the next step, whatever that is, to follow their own interests, their own path, towards a conservation outcome, whether it's managing their land for some value that they, they have, or birds or invasives or water, or whether it's their interest in conserving the land. Um, I'll just say that there's also, uh, hopefully you got that there's not an expectation that you're going to take any of this cookie cutter and apply it to your landscape that people have said over and over that each, each region it has its own characteristics and its own culture. So I'll just leave it there. Any, so are there any questions? Well, once you talk about focus areas, I, I may have missed some meetings, but I was at a meeting in the fall where we were sort of adjusting boundaries of focus areas. Is there an, an official this layer that has been the last training session, we pretty much had the focal areas on that big map that was at the last training session. That was very, yeah, yeah, but it'd be useful for, for local planning if I had a, a GIS shape file of the, of the uh, focus area. Why don't you contact me? Your John, I will send that to you. Okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, I you know, there are other incidents and programs for landowners in my focus area outside of NRCS. And as I'm writing this question down, I'm thinking, okay, well, who would I go to in Pound Ridge? And uh, Watertown Agricultural Council. So my question would be for Brendan, what going forward is something I could offer to the small forest landowner? The small forest landowner? Like uh, under, under 10 acres, something like that? Yeah. Right now, our, our chief funding program uh, is only open to people who are already in enrolled in the program. Forest management planning program that a lot of people have been involved with did sunset uh, almost a year ago now. We're going to transition here and we have more information, we will let the group know about it. Okay, so nothing. I thought of a tip PR will be the site visits within the town of Tundridge to evaluate your invasive species. Is my friend here? And I wondered if there's something from Ottawa or anyone else that would cover our area that we could mention to people who are true conservationists or who are truly cheap and want assistance. Yeah. <laughs> you know what, I, I think we had a, just had a conversation about this as leaders and, and uh, one of the things that I think we, we may try to do if we can um, is put together a team of people who are available um, so that if we were going to go to the landowners that we might at least have a team of people that we can kind of, you know, here's a person that does watersheds, here's a person that does this, and this whole team is somebody that we can refer to 
and possibly connect the landowner to. So that's something that I've wanted to do, um, and I think it would work pretty well if we could use that model so that people had a sense of a team that, that might be available to them um, to answer some of these questions. That's easier said than done, so <coughs> but if we can combine the resources that exist in various areas, we can come up with people who fit the different strategies and can actually handle and talk about those strategies, then maybe we can accomplish that. Yeah. yeah. Um,
the draft period. So when does that part of the process happen? Here or external of these meetings or what? Um, I believe that that happens with whoever's coordinating, whether it's Westchester Land, Trust Miami's board, Eisted. There's at some point you're going to have um, conversations about that process. I send you a um, emails. I'm going to badger you. I just want to follow up with Sarah. So Sarah, we've talked about this model. It's a little bit nebulous. I just so maybe you just go over the layers of the model which Bill was talking about, which would help us to take some of those larger focal areas and hopefully refine them down to a smaller, fewer number of parcels and landowners. Yes, we've all, I think, seen the parcel, or sorry, the focal area in the boundary, because right? you were then involved in setting the boundaries and so forth. So then, like Rod said, the question is, you know, we don't have, um, we, our resources are limited. So in order to try to prioritize and allocate our resources where they make the most impact ecologically, we took some ecological parameters and put them into a model um, that added up the co-occurrence of all these parameters. So I'll tell you what the layers are, but first of all, each layer got a certain score. So what the model does is it adds up all those scores and then it tells us areas where we have the highest occurrence of all of these ecological variables. Does that make sense? So if you look at the map, it's just like a plot of hotspots, basically. Um, so what we put into the model, I think Bill mentioned this earlier, of course, this grant is really interested in water quality and water resources. So the metric we used for that in the model was the presence of um, wells and aquifers that are um, sources for public drinking water. Then we also use tributaries as well, um, prioritizing those that, again, are used as public drinking water sources. Um, we put in hydric soils, because we wanted to know where our wetlands could potentially be. Um, forest resiliency, again, is another really important component of this grant. So we actually use the um, forest resiliency layer from the Nature Conservancy. And again, that is you know, the propensity of different areas to sort of buffer the effects of climate change. Um, set layers in there. And as Bill mentioned, we also put in and prioritize areas that have larger forest blocks, larger intact contiguous forest blocks. Uh, and then the last um, piece of information that we wanted to put in was proximity to open or protected spaces. So parcels that are adjacent or close to protected spaces are higher priorities than those that are farther away. Um, because we want to have some sort of measure of continuity in, in that as well. Um, does that make sense for the process? And again, that you know that's the product. And the way we're going to use it is a whole other piece. So this is taking into account the biological and ecological metrics. But again, there's the whole like sociological part of this too. Because you might have a landowner in mind that you've been courting or have a, re have a relationship with um, that you, you know, definitely want to include. Maybe they are a potential ambassador, but their parcel for whatever reason isn't ranked very high in our model. And that's totally fine. This is just one tool that we can use to allocate our resources efficiently. That's all. It's not meant to exclude anybody. So, does that make sense? The process? Okay. down to it basically getting our list of landowners. They, I mean, I'm sure that landowners would be, it would be incentive to hear that they were selected because they had this very, you know, precious land. I would hope that these, those, those, those meter points, so to speak, are really, I mean, it, it sounds really important. Uh, I, and I guess, is it going to be up to each of us on our own to come up with this database? Is that, is that the next step? Or you, is, is our, no, is the no this, is, this is happening. Westchester Land Trust is we'll doing do it. it. My yeah, so Orange is doing it. The ISTED is doing it. Mm -hmm. We're all coordinating with each other, so we work with, use the same system. Mm -hmm. It might be slightly different, depending on us, because Bill's kind of ahead of us in some respects uh, with some areas. So, but we've tweaked all that. And we, we'll figure all that okay, out. The and then, then when when you meet with Kara and Kate and Westchester Land Trust, then basically you will talk to them and they say, okay, here are the people okay. in your focal area that meet this criteria based on our model. We won't disappear once these workshops are over, and it's, you know, so so we will fairness be engaged in the process of circling you up. And so we'll get that like maybe after the next. You're going to need that information for spring because spring is when we're going to start to contact landowners and start that off. So like after the next meeting. So after the next training session, then yeah, during the time between now and spring is the time when that's going to happen.
Do you have more, Bill? Or? No. Other questions? Everybody's a little glazed. <laughs> All right. Um, thanks for coming. Enjoy what's up in the evaluation. I said it at the beginning. Okay, make sure you fill out an evaluation form.